they'll be traveling over there um, during Sunday school, and then they're going to be back here as soon as the service ends. So um, if you got any questions about that, you have a child, you want to talk about it, have any questions, just ask Tyler. He'll be able to help you out with that. Um, but turn me to Philippians chapter 2 this morning, verse 12. We're going to try to have some fun with some things this morning, but um, just always remember the Word of God. It's a very serious thing. You know we need to take it. Um, we need to take it and just make it the, the centerpiece of our life. And so just stand with me, honor, reverence, reading God's Word this morning. And um, you see the title up there, The Preacher's Here. The Preacher's Here. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I may have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Father, I just pray your will be done in this place this morning. God, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The preacher's here. I want you to look at this, and, and it really don't just jump out to you when you first read these scriptures, but I want you to look and see what's going on. You know, um, Paul's writing this um, book to the church of Philippi, and he's letting them know here in verse 12, he's talking to them. And I want you to look at what he says, I want you to think about what he's saying. It says, wherefore, my beloved, you know, he's saying, man, I love you. He, he uses terms of endearment all throughout this book of Philippians. You read these four verses right here, and they really explain to you, or these five verses right here, they really explain to you exactly why Paul loved them so much. I'm telling you, it would have been an awesome place to go and worship God. I couldn't imagine being one of their services, being a part of their membership. This had to be an awesome, on-fire church. I'm telling you, God that was really using them. We're going to go through this this morning and tonight and look at how God really was using them in the regions why most of it's spelled out in these verses. But look here, uh, verse 12, something that Paul said about this church that would be awesome to be said about any church. I'm telling you, if this is said about a church, it's an awesome place. You can believe it. He says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. He's saying, you know, you, you've been following God. He wasn't talking about just obeying him and the words he preached to him. He's talking about, you know, I deliver the word of God to you. I, I take the message God has from me as a preacher and deliver it to you. And, you know, I'm really just a messenger, and I try myself to get out of the way best I can. Just let God speak to you, you know, and it be God speaking. That's, that's what Paul's talking about here. He's not talking about every little thing he said for him to do. He's saying what God is telling you to do. He's saying, you know, you obeyed it. He said, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, I want you to understand something here. You, you look at this right here, and you look at what he said. He said, they've, they've always listened to God. They've been trying to serve God. And look at what else he said. He said, not only when he was there, but also when he was gone. You think about what that means now. And I got there and God just started stirring my heart about this. And I said, wow, man, that's an awesome place. That's an awesome church. You just think about that now. That blesses your heart whenever you're a pastor or you're a preacher and you see the place and the people that you're pastoring or you're preaching at. And he was ministering to them. And, that, you know, he was sending this letter. And he wanted to go see them. He wanted to be around them. You know, that stated later on. But listen. He had a heart's desire to love on them and to see them grow, and it was awesome to him to see them grow. And listen, one of the biggest evidences of their growth was this, that they acted more godly when the preacher wasn't around. Even when he wasn't around, they was acting godly. You think about that now. You think about that. And, you know, I, I titled it, um, you know, The Preacher's Here, because I've run into some funny stuff over the years, not just as a preacher now, but at, going on visitation, I... It wasn't long after I got saved, I started going on visitation and tried to be faithful at that um, since, and since God led me to start doing that. And whenever you go to people's houses, sometimes it's very comical, the things that go on. And um, so, you know, I, this morning I'm trying to just talk about things that don't involve people in here. But if it fits you, it just fits you, okay? That's what I mean by having some fun, because you, some of us, including myself, are going to be having some fun at our own expense this morning. You understand what I'm saying? All right, but listen. So, um... I go to this one place, and I've told this before, but me and a friend of mine, he just gotten saved, and he went with me, and we went and visited somebody's house. And it's his first time ever going out on visitation. And we go in there, and we sit down. And, I mean, this just tells you exactly what I'm talking about. We sit down, and we're sitting there in their living room, 
and these are guys I've known, you know, basically all my life that we went and visit. And so they're sitting there, and whenever they're talking, man, they're just cussing and drinking, because I, I haven't been saved very long myself. And, I mean, just knocking them back, and, I mean, they're just letting it rip, you know. And I was just sitting down there, me and him were, he, was, he didn't know what to say about anything. You know, and I was just sitting, because I told him, that just like we tell y'all, you know, you, all you got to do is ride along. You ain't got to say anything you don't want to. But I'm, so I'm sitting there, you know, and I just talked to them, say, how y'all been doing? They said, well, how you been doing? And, you know, we just sitting there talking, and they, they said, well, man, what you doing here? We had not seen you in a while. I said, well, I'll tell you why. I said, because I got saved. I said, God sent me here to send you a message today that he wants you to be saved and that you're going to go to hell if you don't. And, man, fun. Uh, they looked at me, and they said, well, we didn't know all that. <laughs> They said, we wouldn't have been talking like this or sitting here drinking like this or anything like this. We'd known you'd come for that. And I said, listen, I said, I ain't worried about all that. I said, that's who you are. That's what you're doing. I said, but I'm just here to send you a message. I ain't being judgmental. I'm just here to send you a message from God and to tell you that. And there's some more comical things went on with that. And man, it was like, boom. You know, and, and there's all time. I talked to a preacher this week about this, and he, just what he said. He said, when he's out in the world just, you know, doing everyday things like going to the grocery store he told me that he went to the um fishing and hunting section the other day and it was the um saturday before deer season went out and he's in there and he's looking at the stuff because you know all you deer hunters know toward the end of deer season or right after is best time to buy anything because it's dirt cheap you know and so um he's in there and he's looking at things seeing what they got on sale and this young this young man's in there you know about 16 17 years old is what he said he thought he was and the young man was talking to him he said man he said he said, I got one more day. He said, I got one more day. He said, I, I, done, I done killed two or uh, two or even three. He said, he killed. He said, but I got one more day tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. And this was on Saturday, you know. So the next day was going to be Sunday when he was going hunting. And so the, the young guy was just sitting there talking to him. And, you know, he, uh, um, my friend asked him, so well, how many deer did you kill? You know, when did you kill them and all this stuff? And uh, he said, well, what about you? He said, you killed anything? He said, no, I hadn't killed one yet this year. He said, well, you going in the morning? He said, no. He said, I'll be at church. He said, I pastor the church. He said, I, you know, I don't hunt on Sunday. And um, he said, uh, I want to invite you to church. And he said, that old boy got mad, son. He said, you could just see his face turn red and got aggravated, you know. And uh, he just he just kind of eased out. And he said he seen him two hours later down there, and he was still kind of looking at him funny. But it all changed, you know. He wouldn't have said those things if he'd not have been a preacher. You think about this. I've been to people's homes before to visit them and to check on them or just go by and see them. And you go and you sit down in someone's home and you're talking to them. You know, and, and they've got a movie on it they've been watching for maybe an hour, about halfway through the movie. And, um, you know, you're sitting there, and you're, you're talking with them about things and checking on them, and then all of a sudden all these cuss words start coming up. You understand what I'm saying? Just dropping bombs everywhere. And they say, oh, man, I need to turn that off. Let me turn that off. And you're like, you know, well, you shouldn't have had it on to start with. You understand what I mean? But they felt conviction because I was there. Let me tell you something. I'm not God. Your church family is not God. And if it takes, if it takes your church family or it takes a pastor being around for you to change the way you talk or change what you listen to or change what you're doing, there's something wrong. You know, you've gotten really far away from God or maybe you ain't ever been a child of God to start with. Because when you get saved, conviction comes on your heart when you sin. And I'm talking about things you know that are sin. Things that you're convicted about. And that shows right there when, when, when you're doing something, if, if me or another church member was walking here or your Sunday school teacher was to walk up and see you doing it and you go to hiding it or getting it out of the way, then you know it's wrong. You know you shouldn't have been doing it to start with. But this church was on fire, man. These people were living more godly away from him than they were with him. You hear me? Could you imagine how that would change our families if we'd done that? Think about it. Could you imagine how that would change our community? you imagine how to change our schools if you young people lived at school the way you act in church? you imagine how that would change? You get what I'm saying? This church, I mean, look, look at what he said on down there in the other verses. He said they're being a light to the world. Being a light to the world. You know why? Because they were being a, what God would have them to be outside of the church, away from the preacher. Listen, man, you, you go somewhere, and, and it's so funny. People try to hide things. And listen, I'm not saying any of this in a judgmental way because I used to be there. You get what I mean? When the preacher used to come up, I used to be there. I get what you're saying. I get it. 
I understand I've done been there. And, you know, I've drank and done all kinds of things I regret when I was younger for a long time. But listen, so I know what's going on. You get what I mean? And it's so comical, it's so funny, though, because they're like your kids. You know how your kids, they think they're getting away from something because they think you're just ignorant of what's going on? And they don't know you've done, done that, done been there and wrote the book on it. And they think, they said, man, how does mama know that? How does daddy know that? But, you know, they, they, they think they're getting away with something. They think you don't realize it, but you can see the signs. Let me tell you something. Our church, our church, now some people can hide it better than others, but most of the time you can see the signs of someone who's not living the same way away from here they are here. You can see the signs, all right? When you go talk to some of their coworkers, maybe you see run into somebody and you're inviting them to church and they say, yeah, I work at so-and-so. They say, yeah, you work with so-and-so from the church. And they, they say, yeah, he goes to your church. You're like, uh oh, what's coming next? What am I fixing to hear? You know, maybe I really don't even want to hear this today. You get what I mean? And we go visit somebody and they end up being some of your family. And they're like, Yeah, we're kin to so and so. Yeah, he comes to our church. Man, he's real faithful, loves God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad he goes to church. And those aren't good signs. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But these people weren't like that. These people were going and setting the world on fire. Why? Because they were passionately in love with Jesus Christ. And when you're passionately in love with Jesus Christ, it ain't just on Sunday morning in a church house. Amen? It's not just when your preacher's around or your Sunday school teacher's around. Are you hearing me? Not just when your mom and daddy's around. It's when nobody's around. You're still in love with it. You get what I'm saying? That's why it was such a powerful church. That's why God was using it in such a powerful way. Just think about if our church was that way. And I mean, I, I love all y'all. I'm not sitting here thinking about anybody this morning. Anything y'all doing. I ain't heard nothing. I ain't seen nothing. I'm usually the last one to know anything, okay? But listen to me. I know there's people that have problems that they're trying to deal with. I know there's people that have sins that they're trying to deal with. All right? Now listen, when you, when you run into a brother or sister who's in sin, or you see him doing things that aren't you know aren't godly outside of the church, you don't need to come back and tell half the church. You understand what I mean? That ain't going to get it better. That's the problem, as a matter of fact. That's the problem. That's one of the reasons that people are so reluctant to come and talk to you about their problems is because they don't trust people in the house of God because people in the house of God gossip so much. Amen? Hey, and that's a sin right there. Amen? Hey, that one's lower when y'all said that one. I don't know why. Hey, and the women seem even quieter. I don't get that. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Y'all can get me later about that, but that's okay. There's some truth in that. And somebody talking to me about that the other day, and they said, well, why is the women tend to gossip so much? I said, man, they say a whole lot more words in a day. Amen. <laughs> so, oh, I, if I said as many words as my wife in a day, I said a whole lot I didn't even say, too. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you know what I'm saying. Brother Kevin's brave enough to shake his head. The rest of y'all sitting there like a like a wooden stone or something, man. A wood idol or something, just sitting there dead. But listen, look at what read this verses again. Read it. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as much in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now listen, like I said, that I'm not there with you all the time. These church folks ain't there with you all the time. But God is. God is there with you. And let me tell you something. If there's some things that you need to work on, get with it, man. God wants to help you. Don't think you're getting by with it. Don't think he don't see you. Don't think he ain't there. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere all at one time. I want to read you some scriptures today. And these scriptures alone, I'm telling you right here, are convicting. I'm telling you today. They're very convicting. Listen to what it says in Jeremiah 23, uh, verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? God's saying there's nowhere you can go that I don't see you. And he not only sees you, he sees what you're doing. Saith the Lord, God said that. Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord. He's everywhere. Proverbs 21, verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the
the Lord pondereth the heart. You may think you're doing all right because you ain't got caught or because other people don't see you the way that you really are. But you ain't. You're not doing all right. And just because you think something's okay, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, that don't make it okay. Just because you feel okay about it, don't make it okay. It ain't, you can't do what the world said and be right with God. You can't go and do what feels right and do what's right in the eyes of God. That's what God's saying. He said, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. It's hard to judge yourself. It really is. But man, God, look, he ponders the heart. God knows your heart. He can show you the places you need to work on. He can help you to take care of those things. You're really living in bondage. You know, one of the most freeing things that ever happened to me, I got to where I was living when I didn't, where I didn't care what anybody seen what I'd done or heard what I said. You know how freeing that is to be able to be who you are in Christ Jesus? Not worry about who's around you or what's going on? That's freedom. That's freedom. See, the devil takes people that are children of God he get them hooked up with some sin somewhere, and they'll be in bondage. They'll be in bondage. They'll be on guard everywhere they go because they don't want people to find out. They don't want people to, they don't want people to hear. They can't be free to just worship God when they come to the house of God. they got to guard the way they talk. they got to guard what they say because they won't be found out. They don't want to be seen. But when you live the way that God would have you to live, let me tell you something. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. What people say about you, who cares? Who cares what they think about what you're doing as long as God's okay with it? Who cares, man? They're always going to say something about you. Think about me being a pastor. Sometimes people, you get up here just let, letting it rip hell, fire, and brimstone. Man, he's so preaching so hard and so legalistic. Then you get up here and you preach God's love and your mercy, and they say, man, he really needs to just preach, preach the Word of God and really get on my toes. Man, you can't make people happy. Think about it. I go out and buy me a new Cadillac. If I was to do that today, people say, man, the preacher's making plenty of money. We ain't got to worry about giving him a raise. I drive an old truck around at 12 years old, and people say, man, won't the preacher get him a new truck? He don't represent us right. He needs to get something decent to drive up to the hospital. You can't ever make people happy. Don't worry about that. Who cares, man? They, what they think don't mean two cents in eternity. Amen? Just make God happy and do what he'd have you do. Don't worry about them. Let me tell you something. There's peace in that. You'll find peace. I'm telling you, no matter where you're at, when you know you're all right with God. You know what you're doing's all right with God. They won't, they won't scare you. You won't be afraid. But uh, Proverbs on 5, verse 21 says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his going. God knows everywhere you went this week. I don't know. God knows everywhere you went, every place you spent money. God knows. It says, Proverbs 15, verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. I'm glad today that God sees the good that I do for Him. Because I'm going to have eternal rewards for that. I'm glad God is there to see that. And we all want God to see the good that we do. Amen? When you stand before God one day, you're going to be remembering all the good you've done. It just ain't going to last very long, probably. Amen? But see, He sees everything. He sees it all. You get what I mean? good and bad. He's a perfect judge. Perfect judge. He always judges everything perfectly. So you ain't got to worry about that one day. He judges what's right and wrong. When he says it's right, is right. And what God says is wrong, is wrong. But he's there. He's with you everywhere you go. It says in Matthew 12, 36 through 37, but I say unto you that every out of word, every out of word, that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now just let me tell you something I've learned about the new age with computers and all. You learn the reality of the judgment of God in one way. Let me tell you why. Because you go put something on Facebook or Twitter, guess where it's at? It's on there, ain't it? You can say I didn't say that all day long, but it's on your Facebook sitting there for everybody in the world to see. Hey, you can go and take it off after you send it out, but it's done hit my phone. I done seen it. Amen? And it's there. Hey, when you stand before God one day, that's how it's going to be. Every word you said, God's going to be able to show you right there. No, no, Lord, I don't know. Yeah, you said that. You said that. 
You said this. And listen, them people you've been gossiping about that saved and born again, they're going to be standing around. They're going to be listening to what you said about them behind their back. Every out of word, you're going to give an account for. You hear what I'm saying? I guarantee if we, that was a reality in our thoughts and our lives and we really thought that was coming and we really lived like that was coming, there'd be a whole lot less of backbiting going on. Amen? I'm telling you, what you put on Facebook, what you put on Twitter, what you texting people, that all counts. And you're going to give an account for every one of the words you said. Every word. God's going to make you give an account of it. Romans 14, verse 11 through 12 says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Your mama ain't going to be there to take up for you. Your mama ain't going to give an account for what you've done. You in here today blaming what you've done on your mom and your daddy? God ain't going to be hearing none of that. You're going to have to give an account. Who did say himself? Every man's going to have to give an account of who? You know who that means? He's going to be standing there. Not your daddy. Not your boss man. You ain't going to be able to blame your wife or your cousin and acting ugly. You ain't going to be able to blame your kids for what you went and done, God said, you're going to give an account. And my prayer this week is that God will make that a reality in your mind today, that you'll be able to see that coming. And that from this day forward, we start living like we're going to stand there, because we are. He said we were. And man, listen to me. There's a lot of folks in here, I guarantee you, that are living just like they live in here out there. Because you see them bringing in folks and people are seeing the reality of Jesus Christ in their life. You can see that God is changing this community through many of you that are going out there and living godly. And I'm very proud of you, and God is very proud of you. And these same words, the same way that Paul loved these Philippians, the same way I love you and thank God for you, the same way that God loves you and is using you. See, you're being a light to the world. So even this morning, if you're not one of those people who lives one way in church and another way out there, Maybe you need to come today and you need to pray for somebody you know is. Or maybe you are one of them people that ain't being real. Because like I said, man, people are good actors. You never know. And you need to come and you need to get right with God today. Because every word you speak, every action you take, you're going to give an account before Almighty God. So take it seriously today. Think back. Let God show you, point out the things that you've been doing that aren't lining up with His word. Ask him to help you get them right today. Leave here as a light and not as a stumbling block. Because that's what we need to be. And you know today, if you're unsaved in here today, you've never given your life to God. You don't want to stand before God one day. Now listen, for the things I've done wrong as a Christian, I won't suffer loss for those things. I won't receive the rewards that I would have had in heaven. But you, if you stand before God today and you're unsaved, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. He's going to send you to hell for an eternity, a lake of fire with the devil and all his demons to be punished forever because you deserve it. But Jesus Christ died on Calvary for your sin and paid your debt so that you could be free from God's judgment and be a child of God. But you have to accept him and give him your life today. If you'll come and do that, you can leave here knowing. The Bible says you can know in 1 John that you have eternal life and that you're a child of God. And that God's wrath will never come down on you for your sin. So let's stand together today. And you come and do what God's laid on your heart this morning. As we play a hymn of invitation.
boy from here over to on um, Timothy, the second chapter, for a little bit tonight. Um, but probably come back to some of this next week, some of these verses here to do them justice. It takes more than a day or two to work through these scriptures right here. But um, we're going to be talking about tonight, you know, just call him, just call God, just call out to him, just ask him, just ask God. You know, sometimes we've all been there where we really didn't know what we needed to do. We wanted to do the right thing. You know, I mean, honestly, our heart was right about it. We really just didn't know what to do. We're in a situation that, you know, we hadn't been around, and maybe the people around us hadn't been through. You know, and, um, you know, you look at this church here, it's just on fire for God, and they had to stay in touch with God. And that's one of the things, if you're going to please God and you're going to serve God, then you got to stay in touch with God. So let's stand in honor of to reading God's Word tonight. Chapter 2, verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just pray your will be done. In this service tonight, God, that you would just speak through me the words you have said tonight. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you know, whenever you really are um, talking about, in verse 13, it says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, when it's talking about good pleasure there, of his good pleasure, it's talking about God's, you know, ultimate divine will. It's talking about what he wants, his will, in a situation in your life. And that's what the reason that we should be doing the things that we do, is to please God and because it's his will for our life. But, you know, before you, I mean, it's kind of like you got to kind of go to the other side of that before you can come back and talk about that because... Really and truly, you've got to get to know how you can get to that point where you know what the will of God is in your life. And you can see in this verse, in verse 16, and I'm, I'm telling you, you could go and there's just, you know, in, just almost endless amounts of um, verses to back this up. But you look in verse 16, it says, holding forth the word of life. The thing you've got to know to start with, if you want to know what God wants you to do, is you've got to know the word of God. All right? That's the problem today is we've got people walking around shooting from the hip. I mean, honestly, that's what they're doing, shooting from the hip. They, they don't know what they're talking about biblically. They're saying what they believe is right or what their mama said or what somebody said at work, but they ain't really looked in the Word of God, hadn't prayed over the Word of God, haven't been diligent in studying the Word of God. And let me tell you something. What, you know, the will of God in your life is going to line up with His Word. There's not one thing God's going to lead you to do that is not lined up with his word. And what he's already told you in his revealed word, this is the 